Hello and welcome back to this week's video. This week is something a little bit different for me. I've never done anything quite like this before. I'm doing an interview with someone that I actually share this space with and share the darkroom with, uh, James Rhodes. You're about to see a little interview with him now. Make sure you guys check out all of his uh, socials and go to his website as well. There's some amazing work up there. I'll have all of these links in the description below. I hope you enjoy. Well, thank you for coming in, James. That's all right. I know you're going to be here anyway. Um, <laughs> so, first of all, I want to kind of ask who you are and what do you do within the photography world? Uh, so, who I am, my name's James Rhodes. Um, I'm an artist that works primarily with photography and uh, photo media. I'm also a lecturer in photography at Newcastle University, and I'm currently in the final year of completing my PhD in fine art photography. What is the most recent body of work that you've kind of put together? Um, well, I sort of work on simultaneous bodies of work at the same time. Um, uh, the most recent body of work that's uh, sort of closer to completion would be my PhD work, um, which will be exhibited in March 2021. Um, which is a sort of, it's exploring what information can be held in the material side of the photograph and playing around with photographic materiality um, and the photograph as an object, uh, not ignoring the image completely, but trying to understand what can be conveyed through the material. Um, but then when I want to sort of step away from that, there's two other body of works that I'm working on at the moment, um, which sort of become a lot less academic because they're my break from having to think a lot, uh, which is one that's exploring hands, um, which is in collaboration with my friend Nick Barlow, who's an oil painter. Um, we're doing that exploration together, which will uh, turn into an exhibition eventually. Um, and then the other one, which I've been working on more recently, um, is one using repetition. And I've just seen this sort of style of repetition become quite attractive to me, and I've noticed it quite a bit. Um, so I wanted to sort of explore it myself. Cool. And just to go back a little bit, when mm. you say the materiality of photography can you kind of describe what that means for people that don't know yeah so well it, there's a few instances of materiality um the first instance is um the mechanism of the camera um and actually the materials used to record light um that's not really what i'm focusing on though um the other instance is um the actual physical tangible object with the printed photograph uh, so what you get when you have a finished product where you've recorded the light, manipulated the light, and then printed the light, whether that be through digital or analog processes. Um, and so when I talk about photographic materiality, it's talking about um, all the tangible aspects uh, of photography and how you can manipulate them. Um, but what I focus on specifically is the actual printed object. Cool. So it's kind of like the meaning within the what the photo is displayed on or what the photo is like represented on. Yes. Yes, exactly. Which then also ties into the space in which you view it because anything that is a tangible object is influenced by the space. Um, you know, if you view a photograph in a home compared to in a gallery, uh, the viewer's interpretation of it will change due to the space. Um, but then also due to the object, like if you printed something very small, um, on just sort of, you know, crappy printer paper compared to the same photograph, um, say printed on aluminium and blown up to the size of a wall, uh, you know, the interpretation of the work changes uh, due to its material aspects. Awesome. That's really cool. Um, how long have you personally been taking photos seriously for? So serious, it's kind of, I mean, it depends on how you define seriously. I mean, I started taking photos with disposable cameras when I was about 11 mm -hmm. um, and then got my first job at KFC to buy a camera when I was or 13, eight months or whatever it is when you can get your first job, like on the day. Um, and then I guess I just sort of mucked around with it. And then when I was accepted into Art Express at the end of year 12, I kind of took myself seriously, like, oh, crap, people actually kind of like what I'm doing. Um, so that was when I pursued it, I guess, then. So that's when I pursued it a bit more seriously went to university, um, studied photography, uh, came out with a first class honours and then sort of gotten to this point now from there. What advice would you give anyone that wants to start out in film photography? Um, 
my best advice would be look at as many photographers as you can that shoot in the style that you want to shoot at um, and then figure out what cameras they use, what type of film they use, go out and get that. And then, you know, fake it till you make it. Just copy their style until your own style emerges. Um, Because, you know, even if you are trying to copy someone else's style, obviously your background, the way that you view the world, everything that you've experienced is going to come into play there. Um, And as you're shooting, uh, that will change the way that you shoot and your own personal style will develop from there. So basically just, like, do your research, look at some other photographers and then shoot as much as you possibly can and don't think about the cost. Don't think about the cost. That's a hard one, but it, but it is important. It is, yeah. Um, and then if you know, if you start processing yourself and stuff, you can really draw that cost down, and then also gain full control over the whole process. For sure. So that pretty much leads us perfectly into the next thing I want to talk about, which is like, who are you most inspired by in your work? Um, well, it's sort of this sort of two sides to the inspiration. If we're talking. Um, of photographers there's always the classic inspiration which you get from like Diane Arbus um uh, Robert Frank Cartier Bisson um Vivian Mayer uh lost for sort of names now um I know John Bellatissari is also a big inspiration for me that's sort of heading into more of the art direction rather than just pure photography um but then I sort of my more contemporary influences sort of fluctuate through my obsessions with what my projects are on. Um, so at the moment, there's this guy, Bruno V. Rollers, uh, who, were, as I was saying before, with repetition, works in repetition, um, and it's sort of the imperfections in the repetitive process that I quite enjoy. Um, so at the moment, I'd say he's one of my biggest influences. That's awesome. We'll share some of the work that you just talked about there. Mm-hmm. So I know that you work specifically a lot in black and white, more mm-hmm. than colour. Um, what has drawn you to that over the more flashy and, I guess, just the C41 process in general? Um, so initially it was me wanting to uh, better my skills personally. So I wanted to get rid of the distraction of colour so that I could then focus on light, shape, and composition within my images, um, not to actually create any work. I mean, obviously I was taking photographs and producing photographs, but they weren't in relation to anything. It was purely so that I could train my eye better to read light, look at shape and form within um, sort of any situation that I'm in um, and not be distracted by color so that then it's the compositions that stand out rather than, uh, you know, a nice, tone or a nice um, sort of plethora of colour in the image. Um, so it was basically to tighten up my own process and my own practice. Um, but then I started to um, do a lot more uh, printing in the dark room um, and learning different techniques of developing um, and being able to control the whole process from uh, loading the film to hanging up the print to dry and being able to shoot in different ways to then know how to process in different ways to alter how I print in different ways. So it gave me this sense of control that I really liked. Um, and yeah, that's, that's sort of then where I headed into a lot more sort of darkroom practices and stuff like that in my work. I agree. Um, the whole black and white thing is definitely a control thing. You have to learn how to focus on simple composition and simple light and dark. And it's very in a funny way to say it, it's very black and white. Mm -hmm. But the ultimate thing is having that control within the darkroom because it's just a whole other level of um, processing and, like, I guess developing your work because there's so many different ways that you can have one image shown Mm -hmm. and there's so many different ways that one negative can come out of a darkroom, which Mm -hmm. is incredible. Oh, 100%, yeah, I agree. All right, James, thank you so much for coming in. Um, I know that you've got more work to do in the darkroom right now, so I will let you get to that. Where can people find you to have a look at some of this work? Um, so the best place to find me is if you have Instagram uh, at uh, Road Shutter, R-H-O-D-S-H-U-T-T-E-R. Um, there's a link to my website there, but at the moment it's a bit sort of uh, hasn't been updated in a while. So Instagram is probably your best place to see more recent work of mine. Beautiful. Thank you so much. No worries. Thank you. Cheers.
If you've made it this far in the video, thank you so much for watching. It's been a real pleasure having James around and for you to see all of that. Remember, his links are in the description below, so go over and check out everything that James has to offer. He's a great photographer and a great mentor and a great friend. And it's been a pleasure sharing this space with him for the last almost a year now. But yeah, anyway, thank you for watching. It's been great. Cheers.